Hello and welcome to today's edition of New Life Program. Coming to you from Adventist World Radio, the Voice of Hope. I'm your host, Tilen Odiamo. In today's show, Musabi Muteshi looks into a disease known as colorectal cancer. Pastor Kigundu has prepared another interesting topic still on the stewardship series entitled Investing. We have great songs also lined up for you, so be sure to keep it the voice of hope. Colorectal cancer is a cancer from uncontrolled cell growth in the colon or rectum, which is part of the large intestine or in the appendix. For more on this, let us invite Musavi Muteshi for the health segment. Be blessed. listener. Welcome to our program, Health Nuggets. I'm your presenter, Musavi Muteshi. Today, I would like to talk about cancers of the colon and rectum. Colon cancer is a cancer of the large intestine, the lower digestive tract, and rectal cancer is a cancer of the last several centimeters of the colon. Cancer in these areas are often referred to as colorectal cancers. A new study finds that the number of people developing this type of cancer worldwide over the past 20 years has markedly increased among both men and women. The rise has been most dramatic in Eastern Europe, parts of Asia and in South America. Colorectal cancer is now the fourth most common cancer in men and the third most common cancer in women worldwide. As examples of how dramatically the diagnosis of this disease is increasing, in Slovenia, the incidence has increased 70% in men and 28% in women in the past 20 years. In Japan, rates have risen 92% among men and 47% among women. Researchers believe that the increase reflects the adoption of Western lifestyles and behaviours because known risk factors for developing colorectal cancer include such factors as diets containing red and processed meats, which are rich in fats, 
and calories but low in fibre. Inadequate intake of fruits and vegetables in the diet, obesity, physical inactivity, poorly controlled diabetes, smoking and heavy alcohol consumption. Other known risk factors include aging. About 90% of people are over the age of 50 at the time of their diagnosis. People of African heritage have a greater risk of developing the disease than do members of other races. Additionally, abnormal genes that we inherit from our family can significantly increase our risk of developing colorectal cancer. The lining cells of our colon and rectum form a physical barrier between our bodies and the bacteria and toxic poisons that find their way into our digestive tract. We were created with a sophisticated mechanism designed to constantly replace the lining cells that have become damaged by the digestive process, by bacteria and by poisons. While healthy new lining cells normally grow and divide in an orderly fashion, sometimes poisons cause growth to become uncontrolled. The cells continue to divide when new cells aren't needed and they form small abnormal clumps in the lining tissue of our intestine called polyps. Over a period of time spanning several years, some of these abnormal polyps can degenerate into cancer. Symptoms of colorectal cancer include such bold changes as the development of diarrhea or constipation, a change in the consistency of the stool, bleeding from the rectum or blood in the stool, the development of abdominal cramps or abdominal discomfort, a feeling that the bowl doesn't empty completely or even such nonspecific symptoms as unexplained weakness and weight loss. Unfortunately, many people with early colorectal cancer have no symptoms at all. This is a real problem because if treated early, 96% of patients with colorectal cancer can be cured, while the cure rate of those with advanced disease is only 5%. Doctors now recommend routine screening of all adults beginning at age 50 to identify those asymptomatic patients with abnormal growths or early cancers. Your doctor may recommend even earlier screening if you have risk factors such as a family history of the disease. Screening involves checking your stool for blood. Additionally, your doctor may insert a long, flexible tube into your rectum that is attached to a light and camera, and this procedure is called a colonoscopy, and it can directly view your entire colon and rectum. Any suspicious area can be sampled through the tube to make a diagnosis. Also, doctors may place a chalky liquid into your bowl in the form of an enema. It will coat the lining of your large intestine, creating a clear silhouette of your colon and rectum, allowing x-rays to identify abnormal growths. If you develop colorectal cancer, staging tests will help to determine which treatments are most appropriate for you. If your cancer is small and not yet spread to other tissues, a surgeon may be able to remove the cancerous portion of your colon and reconnect the healthy portions. For more advanced cancers or in people in poor health, the surgeon may surgically bypass blockages caused by the tumor mass to relieve the symptoms of obstruction. Chemotherapy uses strong drugs to destroy cancer cells and it will be used both before and after this type of surgery. Following surgery for advanced cancers, radiation therapy is frequently added to the chemotherapy. Radiation therapy uses powerful x-rays to shrink large tumors. Chemotherapy and radiation therapy usually do not cure people with advanced cancers, but they do improve the symptoms and extend the cancer patient's length and quality of life. So, What can you do to help prevent developing colon cancer? Yearly testing for blood in your stool and a colonoscopy every five years after the age of 50 will help to lower your risk. Also, making lifestyle changes will help. If you smoke, stop, as tobacco contains substances that directly damage the lining cells of your colon and rectum. If possible, stop drinking alcohol as your liver must rid your body of the alcohol you drink and the chemicals that are created in the process are poisonous to the lining cells of your colon and rectum. 
Eat more fruits, vegetables and whole grains. These foods are low in fat and they contain the vitamins beta carotene and fiber so important in cancer prevention. Finally, combine a healthy diet with daily exercise. Studies have shown that exercise is associated with both the prevention of colorectal cancer and with improved outcomes of the disease. Exercise at least 30 minutes a day. Start slowly and gradually build up to that level. Health Nuggets is written by Dr. Richard Yukel, a medical doctor working in the United States. The medical views expressed in this program are his and may differ for your particular health needs. If you need medical advice, please consult a medical professional in your area. Thank you for listening. Receiving your letters is always encouraging. If you haven't started sending, then it is never too late. Let us know how you feel about this program by sending your views, comments and suggestions to the producer Adventist World Radio PO Box 42276 code 00100 Nairobi Kenya. Our email address is awrnairobi@eau.adventist.org. I come to the garden alone where the dew is still on the roses and the voice I hear falling on my ear the son of god is
Thank you for keeping it Adventist World Radio, the voice of hope. This is New Life Program, and I'm your host, Tilan Odiambo. Pastor Kigundu Ndwiga now joins us with the topic, Investing. Dear friend, I want to welcome you to our Biblical Stewardship Series. I want us to discuss about investing. The most common purpose for investing is retirement. One universal principle for retirement is be debt free. Remember, debt is your worst enemy. Having a home that's paid for becomes a key ingredient in a retirement plan. If it's too large, it can be sold and a smaller home purchased, and the profit put into cash savings for future needs. I repeat, plan to be debt-free at retirement. As for investing in particular, there are many, many options. Whatever the plan, the key ingredient in any investment plan is diversification. The Bible says, cast your bread upon the waters, for after many days you'll find it again. Give portions to seven, yes to eight, for you do not know what disaster may come upon the land. Ecclesiastes 11 verse 1 to 2. Now diversification is a wise practice. Many things can happen as was illustrated in the recent Enron and WorldCom tragedies. People lost their entire life savings. The old sayings don't put all eggs in one basket is not only wise but scriptural. If you make mistakes, don't despair. Learn your lessons and move on. Now, I want to share with you some practical suggestions. Here are some basic stewardship principles to remember in your financial investment plan. Number one, accept Christ as both Lord and Savior. The beginning of Christian investing is to become God's centers. Dedicate every area of your life to his service. Jesus said in Matthew 6 verse 33, Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Number two, pray for divine wisdom and the help of the Holy Spirit. Remember, all planning begins on your knees, as close to the cross as we can get. James 1 verse 5 says, If any of you lacks wisdom, said the apostle, he should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to him. Number three, study Bible principles. Dear listener, there are more than 2,600 texts in the Bible dealing with money or money management principles, more than faith, prayer, love, and peace. It's an important topic, and God has given us ample evidence. Read the book of Proverbs and Second Corinthians for starters. Number four, work with integrity and excellence. God has only one method for supporting the work of his kingdom. His people using their skills, that is both acquired and natural, to work with excellence and honesty. They are paid for their work. They in turn return to him tithes and offerings as he blesses them. Then the cycle continues. Number five, develop a heavenly mentality. Focus on heaven and eternity. My favorite author, Ellen White, says, You need ever to cultivate spirituality because it is not natural for you to be heavenly minded. Number six, give tithes and offerings. You need the blessing of God along with wisdom from above to live a life that will honor your creator. Provide for yourself and your family and support God's kingdom. Number seven, budget to save. Don't just prepare a budget. Dear listener, when you prepare a budget, make a budget that includes saving. Number eight, please be debt free. Make a list of every debt from the largest to the smallest payoff amount. Next, concentrate on paying off the smallest outstanding debt. When it is paid off, go to the next one on your list and use the amount saved from the previous debt to accelerate payments on the next ones. Once your consumer debt is paid off, 
focus on uh, the next debt and once that is paid off pay the amount of the next debt until all the debts are finished Number nine, get educated about life and its details. Please read books, go to seminars, listen to people you believe to be wise, then please make your best decisions. Our decisions based on knowledge helps us protect God's goods. Number ten, please have an investment plan. Begin saving for your children's education when they are born. Then when they are school age, you'll be well planned for their education needs. Someone once said of parents, we are not responsible for our children's choices, but we are responsible for their training. 11. Please have a retirement plan. Start now, not later. Use compound interest and time to your advantage. The younger you are when you start, the more interest you earn and the faster your retirement funds will grow. The final answer I want to give you, my dear friend, is that remember many people live on 110% or more of their income. The difference is made up by the use of credit. Now, unfortunately, sooner or later, this will catch up with us. Saving and living below our means is a wise choice. Life is a risk and so is investing. Nothing, dear listener, I repeat again, nothing is completely without risk. Your tolerance for risk will guide your investment choices and the way you mix your stocks, bonds, and cash instruments. And also remember, age will be a consideration when you're working on your retirement plan. Please maintain a long-term perspective. Be patient and stick with your plan. And take advantage of your employer's retirement plan. And remember, Proverbs 21 verse 5 says, Steady plodding brings prosperity. And now, please be careful about your advisors. A lot of people give investment advice. Often they have products to sell that cloud their advice. In marriage, God often puts opposites together to broaden our lives as well as to give us another perspective. So remember, your spouse may be your most valuable counselor. The other thing I want to talk about the retirement plan, please review your plan annually. Things change as we go through life. Health, occupations, children, and other life elements will modify how we plan. Review your goals, budgets, income focus, and expenses for the coming year. Also project into the future to when a large expense or a long-term planning may be necessary, such as a daughter's marriage, college, their study, a new car, etc., and please plan accordingly. And please have a will. Plan a will. Remember, we are all mortal. Eternal life for most of us will be on the other side of resurrection. Please so organize your records and plan for your funeral. This may sound premature, but remember, it will be of great help to your family if things are in order at that difficult moment. Now remember, there are only two kinds of stewards, faithful or unfaithful. When Jesus told his disciples to store up treasures in heaven, that is in Matthew 6 verse 20, he was assuming that his listeners would be faithful stewards of material and spiritual riches he was about to bestow. Now, those same principles are as true now as they were then. Just as firmly grounded on God's wisdom, love, and faithfulness. Our present happiness, dear listener, is in doing God's will. And I pray that in investing, will become faithful stewards to the glory of his name is my prayer in Jesus' name. That brings us to the end of our program today. Hope you have been blessed. We would like to know your views, comments, and suggestions about this program. Send them to the producer, Adventist World Radio, P.O. Box 42276, code 00100, Nairobi, Kenya. Our email address is awrnairobi at eau.adventist.com. 
org. Join me again next time, same time. Until then, may our Lord keep you safe. I have been your host, Tilen Odiambo. <laughs>